Okay, here's our last example for 3.3 non-linear uh, regressions. So suppose that the laboratory technician takes future measurements of the bacteria culture in from example one. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to example one and we're going to take those data points. So let's discuss the effectiveness of the exponential models um, on like the extended data. So in example one, we said that the, the exponential model was a very, very uh, solid curve of best fit for this data. And then what we're going to do is we're going to find the new exponential curve of best fit, and then we're going to comment on whether or not it's still effective, okay? So going up to this laboratory technician in the bacterial culture, let's actually just copy this. Let's get onto Excel, and we'll paste. Then what we'll do is we'll paste all of these new data so just from here down, okay? So now we can just work with it, okay? I'm going to make this all uniform. It's going to be here, this, and actually delete, cut that. Mm -hmm. Don't know why this went on there twice. Oh, this must have been twice. I'll copy that get back here ah there we go okay hopefully that's good so uh, okay so what we want to do is we want to insert uh, line graph scatter plot okay a uh, quick layout Let's do the entire thing because it all immediately gives us our line of best fit for our linear regression. Okay, this is going to be population of bacteria over time, and this is going to be our time axis in hours, and then this is going to be our population. Okay, so this actually, when I take a look at this, this to me looks like a pretty good a pretty good fit. Like we have a couple points on the the upper side of the line of best fit and then a couple on the lower side. So this could actually be a really good fit. But let's add the question asks us to add the exponential. Here we go. Exponential. So initially I don't see as soon as this exponential is here, what I want to do is I want to change this. I want to actually change this because I don't know why, but when we put this exponential on the scale of the y axis, I feel changed. So let's go um, we get really up to this 1500 mark. So let's go 1500 and then press enter. Okay, there we go. So now it's like completely zoomed in. So um, in example one, our exponential regression looked fabulous. Now, and we can take a look at that quickly here. Yeah, this is from example one. So our exponential looked pretty good. Our exponential looked pretty good, right? So, um, yeah, this is power. And then this is cubic and, uh, cubic and uh, a parabola. And then even if we did, we do the exponential. I think I was thinking power and exponential. Let's go trend line. Let's just go exponential. So power, exponential. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so um, it was a pretty good fit. But now looking at the extended values, it's not a good fit anymore. I would say that the line is a better fit. And even if you want to take it further and you want to suppose so X that add a trend line. Let's go. We can try polynomial of order two, and we can do that in red. Okay. That's an okay one. And we can even do polynomial of degree three. So polynomial degree three. Let's add that in another color. Let's go like yucky, this yucky green color. Okay. So it's getting a little bit busy now, but 
you have to go over them and say which one is the best. But this question specifically just asks us for the the exponential curve. So we know now that the exponential curve is no longer a really good curve of best fit. I don't think that it's effective for this new model. Instead, I think that the line, the initial line, was quite effective. So let's talk about limitations. Okay, so regression curves do not always produce a perfect line or curve. And we saw that, right? Our points are going to be a little bit off. And we have to maybe apply different regression models in order to find the, the one that best suits it. Okay, also we're looking at the coefficient of determination. So um, it doesn't always produce a perfect line or curve, especially when the predicting values are outside of the data. This is super important, okay? So what we just looked at in this past example was we looked at um, how in example one, we extrapolated. So we said, okay, if this is the data, we're going to predict that the data continues to go up. But that wasn't actually quite the case because then looking at sheet nine, well, yes, the data went up, but then the data squiggled, squiggled. So if I were looking at this, it almost looks like a sine curve, right? Because it's going up, down, up, down over that diagonal line. That's what it looks like to me. So I wouldn't say that this exponential model is no, any longer um, a solid model. So when we're extrapolating, it's very difficult. So for a linear model, just a reminder, which is degree one, we need two points to find the equation. We know that from y equals m s plus b back in grade nine. For a quadratic model with degree two, we need three points to find the equation. So for any polynomial with degree n, we need n plus one points to estimate for it.